Hi, welcome back. Chef Ellen with you again, another vegetable adventure. We're going to be talking about preserving your harvest. This time it's focusing on winter crops. going to first talk about a bunch of vegetables that you're going to want to keep in your refrigerator and that's separate from things that you keep out of the refrigerator so I want to talk to you about all these gorgeous gorgeous vegetables I have in front of me it's winter almost winter it's actually the end of October we had our first snow today which was a little unexpected but it's a good reminder that we want to keep our crops happy in the places that they need to stay in order to have them have a longer shelf life. So the first thing I want to talk about are things like carrots and beets. Carrots, you're going to want to keep them dry and you can put them together in a Ziploc bag. Uh, like-minded things in a Ziploc bag, flat, squeeze out as much air as possible and keep them in a lower cold shelf in your fridge. For beets, the same thing. Uh, you're going to want to trim the greens off your beets at about a half an inch and also put them in a Ziploc bag. You don't need to wash them, especially if you get your carrots dirty. Keep them in the dirt because that will actually keep them healthy longer. So if you have Brussels sprouts, and Brussels sprouts are grown like this, and what you wanna do is pop them off their tree like that, and then just either put them in a Ziploc or a plastic container, just like that. Try to get them a little dry before you do that, because sometimes the moisture will hasten any uh, degrading of the vegetable. Here we've got a beautiful celery root or celeriac, and that also can store in your fridge, either in plastic or a plastic bag. Keep it dry before you put it in. Another thing that's a, a really great storage crop are these gorgeous leeks. So these are really beautiful. I would chop off the root end and put them in a long bag. If you have extra greens that you don't need, you can chop those off. Alternatively, if you'd like to prepare them so you could use them easily, you could chop them up into already sliced pieces, throw that in a Ziploc and put that in the freezer actually. And that's a really great way of kind of prepping that vegetable a little bit so it makes it easier when you wanna use it. We've got cabbage, again, cabbage cold part of your fridge, put it in plastic, make sure that it's, this, this guy's a little wet, but make sure it's a little dry before you do that. And all of these vegetables, check on them every so often. Peek at your carrots and your beets and look, maybe look at them and make sure nothing's uh, getting rotten. If something's rotten, pull it out, use what you can of it and put the rest back. Over here, we have a gorgeous crop of root vegetables. So this is a storage kohlrabi. And if you're familiar with kohlrabi, you might not know the storage version of this. This is a wonderful vegetable. It stores really, really well. And the storage versions tend to be quite a bit larger than the regular ones you get during the summer. Some of them are quite like basketballs. So um, again, I would Make sure this is tightly wrapped in plastic and check on it. Um, if it's been stored for a while, these little nubby guys get a little slimy and they might pop off, but it's no worries, they're gonna be fine. As you probably know, the kohlrabi has a good tough skin on it and it won't degrade. Here, let's see, we've got some turnips and we have some rutabagas. 
So these are all, again, beautiful, beautiful root vegetables that store very nicely in the refrigerator. We have a beautiful watermelon radish. If nobody has ever tried these, these are amazing. They're beautiful inside, pink and gorgeous. One thing to keep in mind, don't cut the root end off of your turnips and your radishes because when you do that, it allows the decay to get inside of it. So if you keep it just like this, it will last so much longer. And these are all, these are all actually daikon radishes of different varieties. The daikon radishes won't last quite as long, so start using those first, but all of these will last really, really well in your refrigerator. And the goal of this is to help you have vegetables that you can use throughout the winter. And if you store them right and you keep an eye on them, they can last all the way through the spring. So to me, that's really cool. So I just spent quite a lot of time talking about putting all your vegetables in plastic. And that's maybe not so cool these days, but I wanted to point something out. Number one, save your plastic bags and containers that you get takeout in or anything from the supermarket. I wash, I know I'm crazy, but I wash my plastic bags over and over and over again. I even have this cool little bag dryer thing. Um, and it's really terrific. I don't have to buy any bags because I have them already on hand. There's a few other things you can do. You can use a plastic container. Again, a takeout container. This is a quart. You can get the half pints. Um, another thing that's really great are these silicone bags. And I have these in various sizes and they wash really well. They go in the washing machine. They wash by hand. Again, I use, I put these on top of my little dryer to, to dry out. They work super well in the refrigerator. You can freeze vegetables in them. You can even dunk them in uh, water like sous vide and reheat your vegetables. And these are obviously reusable. It's food grade silicone. Awesome stuff. Keep in mind, reuse what you have to go out and buy new stuff. Next, I want to talk to you about greens. Some of you may know that things like kale and collards uh, will actually last in the snow. Believe it or not, I talked to the farmer where I work uh, this morning and all the kale is sitting in the field under snow right now. But once it's picked, you're going to want to use it pretty quickly. Kale will last a bit longer than, than say, lettuce, but um, you're, you will want to use these pretty quickly. Spinach, on the other hand, will last a little bit longer. Some of these things you can preserve, some of them you can't. This is arugula, for example, and I got lucky that I received these with their roots on them. And what I like to do is to just simply put them in a glass of water, and then I'll put a plastic bag around them, or not, your choice, but I think it, the leaves stay a little bit fresher. And I just tuck this in the refrigerator. The same with herbs. I've got some nice dill here. I have it sitting in a glass of water with a bag around it tucked up like this. Now with herbs, you can easily dry some of your excess herbs. So at the end of the season, I like to buy extra dill, for example. Uh, I, I don't ever have great luck growing dill, but I bought a very large bunch just the other day and I dried it all filled up a nice jar like that and that's so helpful and so economical really um, herbs that I grow in my garden are things like parsley basil rosemary thyme things like that oregano the rosemary thyme basil and oregano uh, I can dry uh, my I happen to be lucky I have a oven that will dehydrate hydrate things at 140 degrees. You might have a separate dehydrator that will do that. So that's uh, very handy to do with herbs. With my lettuce, I would get a beautiful head of lettuce like this, and I would cut the core out of it and dunk the entire thing in my salad spinner and wash the whole head of lettuce at one at once, even though I'm not gonna use the whole thing for salad for dinner tonight. 
And then I take my salad spinner, I'll spin my lettuce, dry, get it dry, and then wrap it in a dish towel and put it in the refrigerator. And that way I have it all ready to go next time. I could tuck it into one of my silicone bags or a reused plastic bag. Spinach, same thing. We're just going to um, rinse it in water. And I'm gonna show you a quick recipe for steamed spinach. So what I like to do this time of year is get extra spinach and I steam it and I squeeze the water out of it and I stick it in a, a container of some sort and I freeze it. And I do that because I am a huge spinach lover and I really, really love the taste of this mature, you know, really good spinach. And it's way better than that little baby spinach you get in the clam boxes at the supermarket because that stuff doesn't even really have that much flavor to it in, in my opinion. Um, this, this mature, locally grown, locally grown, there you go, that's the key to it, is so flavorful and wonderful. I like to be able to have it available to me throughout the winter. I can use it in frittatas, quiches, you know, all sorts of things, soups, and it's just so great. And you feel really good that you put something away and you have it for the winter. Now I wanna talk about squashes. Of course, we live in New England and we love squashes. So this is probably the ultimate uh, storage crop. We have a whole slew of uh, varieties available to us right here. Uh, I have just a few selections uh, in front of me. I've got a pie pumpkin. I have a honey nut variety, a delicata, several versions of acorn squash, different, I think this is called carnival, a classic butternut squash, and a spaghetti squash. So all of these last a little bit differently. The honey nuts are the ones that you should use right away. The, if you've ever had one of these, they're amazing. They're a sister vegetable to the butternut, but they're even sweeter and they're fabulous. It's, it's like somebody put brown sugar in your squash without doing that. It's really wonderful. This is a delicata squash. These don't last quite as long. The skin on these is edible. Um, these are really wonderful, pan seared, roasted, whatever. Uh, another squash you probably want to use a little bit sooner is your spaghetti squash. This guy is the one that's going to last the longest and this the next. If you are shopping for squash, try to pick one with as unblemished skin as possible because if there's a ding, and I happen to have one on here, you might not be able to see it, but a ding in the flesh of a squash is gonna let, again, the bacteria get in there and it's gonna start to break down and disintegrate. And if you've got a bunch of squashes stored in the same spot, then they're gonna start to you know, sequentially get bad. If you happen to have any vegetables that don't look so great or maybe have a bad spot, don't throw the whole thing away. It's very usable. Just cut out the bad part and work around it. We don't like to waste food. We don't need to waste food. And that's a good practice in general. If you have too much of one thing, for example, if you have too many butternut squashes and maybe if you're only two people and you've got several giant squashes. This is one thing you can do very, very easily. Peel your squash, cut it up into cubes or whatever shape you want and put it in the freezer. Put it in your silicone bags or your takeout containers or your Ziploc bags. It'll be such an amazing thing for you to look in that fridge and there you've got that pre-prepped squash ready to use. I keep my squashes in my garage in a file cabinet. I know that sounds a little nutty, but um, I've been doing this for years and it seems to work out pretty well. Um, the one thing you've got to do is periodically check it and hopefully you're going to be using them. So let's say you have five squashes and let's say you need to use them in a couple of months. Just think about how many squashes you have and try to pace yourself. So use one every couple of weeks just so that you can use them up and they don't go bad. 
in my description at the end of this video, you will see uh, some very specific temperature ranges for things to be stored in. So I hope that's helpful to you. Um, and uh, let's go on to the next one. So what would we do without potatoes and onions and garlic? They're pretty much staple items in my household. So potatoes and sweet potatoes can be stored together. I, I keep mine in my file cabinet, as I mentioned. Um, I think I basically have a drawer that I have potatoes and sweet potatoes in. So don't put these in the refrigerator. Whatever you do, you will ruin them. Sweet potatoes in particular actually turn black when they get too cold. Um, they will not last quite as long as potatoes, but if you keep them in this right condition, they will last for quite a while. Potatoes also are great and you can, you know, this way you can go to the farmer's market and store up on different varieties of potatoes and, um, you know, try to keep them, you know, labeled so you know what's what, and that will keep you going for a while. If they happen to grow a little uh, spud on them, it's not a problem. They will be fine. Just pop it off and cook it. If they are not uh, cool enough or not dark enough, if any light gets in on these potatoes, they will turn green. Maybe you've noticed if you kept a potato on the counter and start to get a little bit of a green hue to it, that's why, because it doesn't love light. It grows underground, so keep that in mind. Now, when it comes to onions and garlic, you want to keep these away from your potatoes. I have them here together, but don't keep them together. And the reason is there's, the onions will make a substance, an ethylene gas that will turn certain vegetables and potatoes are one of them bitter. So I have a lovely little net bag here. And one thing you could do is pop your onions in your net bag, keep it somewhere cool and dark and they will be very happy. Alternatively, you could keep your onions. I happen to have this crazy Tupperware container and I keep my onions in there. Shallots fall in the, the category of onions, same thing. Keep them cool and dark. And also you might have red onions. Red onions are fabulous. Actually, I think well, that's, a, that's a shallot. Anyway, red onions, will actually uh, not last quite as long as the yellow onions. So if you have a choice, use red onions first. And garlic, uh, sometimes I buy a large quantity of garlic or I'll get a large quantity of garlic in my CSA share and I keep them with the onions and I take a head or two out at a time and leave them on my counter and they're fine. And onions will be fine too. I sort of do that. I'll have, take a couple out, keep them on my counter and use them. And then when I, they're gone, I replenish. So that's my little methodology. Lastly, I just wanted to say a word about apples. Everybody loves apples, apple picking and so forth. Maybe you went apple picking and you have a lot of apples. What do you do with them? Well, apples like onions are tricky because they will emit that ethylene gas that will ripen things. If you ever, there's a little trick of ripening something in a paper bag with an apple. You stick, say, a hard avocado in a paper bag with an apple, it'll ripen faster. So you wanna make sure that your apples are, are well wrapped in whatever bag or silicone bag or whatever it is and keep it away from other vegetables because it will make them ripen faster. And now I'm going to show you a quick way to steam your spinach for freezing or making it into a side dish. So, I want to steam this wonderful spinach that I have. I've got it, had it soaking in some water. I'm not going to drain it. I'm just going to take it and put it in my pot, water and everything, because I want a little bit of that water to steam with it. This is really nice, clean spinach. Now you can see, I think I have enough. Yeah. 
I've got enough water in there to steam. I'm just going to turn my burner on and put the top on. We'll be back in a moment. Let's check out our spinach. Wow. So I have barely cooked this. And just so you know, there's nothing in this pot but spinach and water. And all I basically wanted to do was wilt my spinach down. And you see that? It, you know, spinach wilts down to almost nothing, but this is barely cooked and there's no steamer insert or anything. It's just the, the little bit of water from the rinsing them and the spinach. I'm gonna let this cool down. I will squeeze the water out and then I get to use it in um, a recipe. Like my, my favorite way to cook spinach is to saute a little onion and garlic and add my steamed spinach, heat it all back up and voila, ready to go. Even a little tiny nutmeg in there is a wonderful pairing of spinach. So that's it for today. I hope you enjoyed it and learned a little bit and come back next time and we'll do something else together. Bye. Welcome back. Okay. I gotta get used to this again, sorry. Okay, turn it off. Bye. Bye. <laughs>